you guys convert to Islam or we are going to burn you in your homes and take your women away. Now, we were home, I was home, and we are listening to this, and they are more, they are louder than the loudspeakers. They are, it's clear that they are coming to kill us. We did not know what to do. My mom was there. Again, the cousins got together. We had five or six families in that neighborhood were our cousins, friends, so we got together so that at least we felt safer when we were together. And my mom, um, my mom caught hold of me, she pulled me and she hugged me. Uh, I will never forget that hug. It always brings tears to my eyes and it felt like that's the last hug she's gonna give me. <laughs> Excuse me. So we're, we're, I'm trying to console her, mom, don't worry about it, it was it just an event. Remember what happened last time? They were shouting in the mosque, and next day we went play cricket and everything was normal. Same thing, it's, it'll happen today and tomorrow we'll be back. And, but she wouldn't let me go. She knew that this was dangerous. Uh, people, 2,000 people coming, marching towards 150 Hindu families. And, there was nothing. Hindu Hindus were not violent. If we hurt somebody, we would run with a first aid kit. Oh my God, that person is hurt. Even if that was our enemy, that was our nature. That is still our nature. So uh, we have no idea what to do. Even if we have weapons at home or whatever we had, we could not use them. We simply were just standing there waiting. We're going to get killed. And um, apparently they kept coming. They kept coming and they're getting louder and closer and um, immediately um, there's, uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's a lot of noise, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, my parents, they're, 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 they're trying to console us, and there was a Central Reserve Police Force uh, battalion on a place called Nerdkadal. That was a little bridge between Chopin and Batpora, and it had around 25 to 30 uh, uh, army personnel uh, that worked. They were armed and they stopped these folks. They said, you guys can't go past this point. Uh, whatever you have to do, just, just shout your slogans, whatever you have to do, and go back. You can't go past this point. And they got really angry. They turned back. They burned down a uh, public works department office, which it took years to build that office. It was a really nice office and had more employees, uh, more Kashmiri Muslim employees than Kashmiri Hindus. It had around 90%. And then they went forward and burned down a uh, girls' high school. That girls' high school had 95% Kashmiri Muslim girls than Kashmiri Hindus, but they burned that down as well. So they were loud, they were clear, and they were angry. And as soon as they went back, we, I mean, the, the noise started getting a little less, and we kind of felt that maybe we have, we have you know, we have managed to escape this uh, this killing, maybe maybe we're not going to be uh, dead today, and so so finally they they the whole thing subsided. They went back because of this CRPF uh, Jawans. Thanks to them, that is the reason the 150 families in Shopian Kashmir survives. Some still got killed, which I will explain. Uh, and then after that, um, immediately after the second incident. Almost 80% of Kashmiri Hindus who lived in Shopian, Kashmir, so over 100 families, they decided that it was time to leave because this it's not safe here. This time we were saved by these CRPF policemen. What, what about next time? So immediately, uh, next day, within, uh, within next uh, 24 hours, around 80% around of these Kashmiri Hindus packed their bags uh, and, and left the valley, and our family was one of them. Although my some of my uncles and my grandparents, my grandparents stayed because we had some business. So almost 80% of the valley was gone. Now, I mean, I mean, Kashopia and Batpora was gone. Now another 20% was still there, and these were businessmen. They did not want to just pack their bags and go because they had nothing. Their entire livelihood was that. So the second, the third plan was how to intimidate these 20% of the people and get them out of. Uh, Shopian Kashmir. So in the in in uh, the following month, uh, a gentleman by the name Rajinder Kumar Tikku, who was sitting with uh, in his garment shop, he owned a garment shop in Shopian Kashmir, was sitting with his friend Baya Kakru, and uh, they uh, it was middle of the day, uh, 
three gunshots in his chest and he was shot dead on spot. And blood all over his garments and the gentleman who was sitting next to him, he was told if you guys don't leave, whatever is left here, in whatever Hindus are left in the Batapura uh, Shopin, if you guys don't leave, now this is going to be your fate. And no one was going to stay there after that. So the rest 20% was absolutely gone within the next few days. So if there's a huge dilemma and misconception among a lot of folks who don't know why the Kashmiri Hindus leave uh, the valley. A lot of people say maybe they were scared. A lot of people say it was the government's plan so they, they could crack down on the terrorists. But that was not the case. It was an unbelievably well-planned and executed with 96 to 100 percent efficiency that these, how they planned to get Kashmiri Hindus out of there. Now, within one year after this thing happened, within one year, 73 houses were burned down, so there's no question of you coming back. You just stay there. There was, uh, there was, this, this, is, this is a real story. That's what happened with us. I just want to add two facts to it. Yesterday, two days ago in Chopin, Chopin has sold more fruit in the past two months than it had sold in the entire 30 years after the, uh, after the exodus happened, after the disturbance started. It has 